everybody, it's me again, Johaila, and today I'll be dissecting a crop. So I got this crop earlier from the market and I put it in the refrigerator to preserve it so that the internal organs of the crop will still be intact. So the objectives of this dissection is first to briefly discuss the general characteristics of a crop. Second is to examine the external and internal anatomy of the crop. And lastly is to identify the gender of the crop, whether it is a female or a male. Crops are members of the crustaceans order under the phylum Arthropoda. Arthropoda is the most diverse phylum on earth and accounts for about 75% of all living things. Despite its diversity, crops have a number of features that distinguish them from other similar creatures. Crops are decapods having 10 legs um, which is a distinctive feature that separates them from other similar species. So let's now proceed to the dissection of the carapace to see the internal organs of the crop. And we're gonna dissect the pincers too to see the muscle contractions that is occurring there. So let's get started! So now let's talk about its general characteristics. So as you can see that from its carapace, here up to the appendages it has a hard chitinous skeleton which basically protects the internal organs of the crop so we can observe that it also have a bilateral symmetry where a line separates the body of the crop into two mirror image and most species are gonoristic which means they can be either a male or a female. So my crop is a male since it has a narrow and a T-shaped apron here. Because as we all know, female crops has a more rounded and broad apron. And it also have a five pairs of jointed appendages and one of which is called the caliped and the other four pairs are the walking legs so i read a study conducted by fish source 2020 about the characteristic of a swimming crop so let's see if it meets the three characteristic of a swimming crop First, the carapace should be flat and broad. As we can see, the carapace is broad, however, it's not quite flat. Second, the anterolateral spine must be well developed or spread at greatest width and has the same length and width. So here are the anterolateral spine and I measured this earlier. Its width is 15 cm, whereas its length is 7 cm. Lastly, the last pair of periopodes or legs must be adapted for swimming. So, as we can see, it has a puddle shaped legs which basically can help the crop to swim. So now we'll identify and examine the external and internal anatomy of the blue crop. So let's first start on the dorsal side. So this is the carapace, a hard upper shell that covers and protects the head and the thorax. So here in the posterior end, we can see the folded abdomen. So here we can see the lateral spine. This two structure here. And here between the eyes is the frontal spine. And it also has a five pairs of appendages. So among the five pairs of appendages of the crop, the first pair is called the caliped. The caliped is consists of the marus or the arm. Next is the carpus, the third segment from the distal end of a crab leg where appendages flexes. And this is the propodus, the second segment from the distal end of a crab leg with the immovable finger and palm. The propodus and the ductile are called cala, and the entire claw is the calipid. And all of these four walking legs also consist a marus, propodus, and a ductile. 
and the swimming legs is composed of a coxa, bassi ischium, marus, propodus, and ductile. And this orange structure here are actually the hairs of the appendages. Now let's flip it to see the ventral side. Part of the thorax. First, this is the sternum, and these are the thoracic sternite and the apron, which is used to determine the gender of the crop. Earlier, we found out that this is a male crop since it has a narrow apron, and this part of the apron is the abdomen. And behind this, we see the abdominal cavity right here. And these are the gonopods. So the longer one is the first gonopod and the shorter one is the second gonopod. And this is the anus. Here is the intestine. And now let's proceed to the mouth field. So this is the mouth and this is the third maxillipede. So this is the marus, the exopod, and the ischium. And this extension here is called the pulp. So it also have a marus, a propodus, and dactylus. So here we have the compound eyes. And below, here is the eye stalk. Then the orbit. These are the antennules, and this is the antenna. So now let's get some scissors and start the dissection of the carapace. So let us start here, then go around the carapace. So let's just be careful to avoid damaging the internal organs of the crab. So here are the internal features of the crop. So now let's remove the epidermis. So this structure right here is the mid gut. Right here, this is the mid gut. This is the flank. This structure here it is. These are the gills of the crabs. This. So the heart of the crab lies here. This white structure here. This are the male gonads. This right here is the cardiac stomach here. And 
Okay, here is the brain of the crops. Right here. And below here is the maxillipedal flagellum. Here. This is the maxillipedal flagellum. So the structure here, as you can see, is the gastric muscle here. So let's now get the hepatopancreas. So here, this is the hepatopancreas of the crab. This is the digestive sacrum here. This. So as I said earlier, we will dissect the pincers to see the massive contractions that is occurring here. So let's cut it. So when we pull it down, the claw will close and when we push it up, the claw will open. So that's it. Don't forget to clean your area and wash your hands and your tools. So that's all for the crab dissection. I hope you learned something. Thank you!